Hi, I'm Sarah from Milk Coming. Such a pleasure to be with you here in London. Yeah. Um, maybe you can kick off with a brief introduction to No Hard Feelings. For people who don't know anything about it, what can they expect? Uh, you can definitely expect to laugh a lot. You can expect to cringe and hopefully share that cringe with the people you're laughing with. Um, and I think you're going to be surprised at just uh, how heartfelt it is and how much you, you might find yourself caring about uh, the two people that the story's about. And obviously had such a uh, good time with this film in the cinema and laughed out loud plenty of times, um, but found it interesting to to find out that actually it was based on a real ad that was, yeah. was listed in Craigslist. I know slightly altered from, from the original one. Um, Barely, and, though. And, and, Barely. But, and they'd kind of gone back and basically thought, well, who are these people? What would these characters look like? And flesh it out from there. What did you think when you first read the script? And did it really blow you away? Yeah, it's, it's, it's brilliant how... I would, yes, I was absolutely floored. I was laughing so much and especially floored at how much you understand everything that happens, every choice that these characters make, and it just somehow leads them to these ridiculous situations. Um, and I think that that stayed true throughout filming and watching the movie. You really empathize with these people, even though you don't necessarily agree with the decisions they're making, you understand exactly why they're doing everything they do. And the thing that I think has like played up really well for laughs, probably that you know I can connect with in a way being a millennial, is this kind of like intergenerational differences. You know how there's kind of this clash basically. Um, you've got kind of the, the boomer generation and then Jennifer's character generation and then Percy's. Um, and you know how did you kind of connect with 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 his character? You know because. He's so introverted, he's so, you know, stuck online. But, you know, this is the reality for a lot of people these days. So how did you connect with him? Yeah, I mean, actually one of the very first things I, I did was I wrote this sort of whole essay about his intentions and who I think he is because I did, I connected with him so much and his fear of the world that definitely sort of sits in me. I'm I'm more social and outgoing and that's why I'm an actor and we're here talking to each other he wouldn't he would hate this uh, part <laughs> but um, but but that that fear that anxiety that sort of self effacingness mm. uh, was something I, I definitely grew up with and, and had difficulty acknowledging I think that in a lot of the same ways that he does so um, yeah I think in the way he speaks the way he acts Gene, our, our director, really trusted me to, to be like the young person representative um, and take charge when I felt that the script in any way was inauthentic to like speak how I, as a Gen Zer, uh, would speak and, and behave how I think someone in my generation, me, would, would behave. So it's a, very, it's a very truthful thing because I am his age. <laughs> And obviously we can't go any further without talking about Jennifer Lawrence. I mean, uh, you know, what uh, an actress to be acting yeah. opposite. But in a role that we've never seen her in before yeah. as well. It feels like a real first. We saw glints of her comic timing in lots of her roles. And, you know, when she's done chat shows and things like this. Exactly. But never kind of unleashed into a character like this. Yeah. Um, were you intimidated? Did, how did you kind of build that feeling of trust to do some pretty out there scenes together as well as <laughs> the emotional stuff? Yeah, it was immediate, this connection that we had. Like like from the chemistry read, first day, it was like, oh, we might be friends. And then by the end, it was like, oh, we're best friends. <laughs> like we are really important to each other. Uh, and, and we still, we talk all the time. So yeah, I think I think we, we just connected very easily. There's something very kindred about the two of us. I was definitely intimidated. But, but the same is sort of what I said before, I knew I was this character and, and the worst thing I could do was let that intimidation stop me from being myself every day um, and and that was really all I did I didn't worry about like meeting her at her level as much as I did making sure I was bringing myself to the table because she was certainly bringing herself I mean as a celebrity this role is more how we think about her than any other role has ever been she was she was like I'm, this role was made for her and she was made for this role and just you know thinking about some of the scenes that we see what do you think might have been the most challenging for you or the most fun because I don't know what is more difficult, you know, trying to pretend you're like getting driven on the front of a car. <laughs> Some of the more like crude, cringy ones, or you know, these really poignant scenes like the one in the restaurant where you're playing that, you know, so, so beautifully. Um, and and the, the, the look on her face, you know, it's just like saying so many different things. So, you know, what yeah. were some of the hi highlights and challenges along the way? Yeah, I mean, that day, the, the day we shot Man Eater at, 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 the, at the bar, I mean, I, I, my family was there that day. I got to arrange uh, that version of the song myself. I, I sang it live on the day. Like it was a special, special day. The hardest thing, there was something weird with my body that I had to do every day. Some weird like half stunt that was just gonna like make me sore later or something. 
but I was still game for all of those. It was the dogs. Honestly, the dogs were the number one hardest part of the movie. Oh, dogs are amazing. They don't understand what's going on. I can't be, I can't help them. I can't yell at them. I have to yell at them sometimes. I got to treat different dogs differently. That was the hardest stunt I had to do was do any, anytime I'm on screen with a dog, I'm so concerned about the dog. I can't, it's very hard for me to get past it. <laughs> that was the number one hardest thing and I will stand by that. And in terms of kind of like, you know, I don't know how much improvisation there was, but the thing that I was thinking about is that obviously Percy, the way you're having to play him, is very earnest mm -hmm. you know, through a lot of the film. And he's very straight and, you know, whereas, you know, Jennifer's character is going all out, you know, getting <laughs> nude, dancing on the floor. I mean, how many scenes did you have to retake because you were just cracking up? How did you kind of keep your composure? It was every day. It was every day. Every scene we did, we were both breaking all the time, especially because you're right, Percy, when we meet him is kind of like a no nonsense, doesn't really know how to laugh at himself at a situation um, and just is seeking deeper understanding of things. So that's sort of real like listening that I have to do mm. to some of the funniest things I've ever heard. And Gene <laughs> would be throwing things at us. And once one of us went down, the other one was down. So Jen and I were just always laughing together. There are lines that are not in the movie because we were <laughs> laughing so hard through them. Like it, it was difficult, but also it would be a total disservice to the script if we weren't having fun mm. constantly. And we really were. And, um, you know, the thing I also felt was, you know, it really reminded me, I guess, of like kind of R-rated comedies I grew up watching. And maybe we haven't seen them around that much, but obviously you're a lot younger than me. Did you have like comedies that you, you grew up watching that kind of like informed your, your, your performance or that you'd gone back to watch, you know, was there any references for you? Yeah, it's my favorite growing up was always Anchorman which couldn't have less to do with this movie because like those are all such huge exaggerated performances and that's why that movie's so special. This movie's funny. Like it, it could be compared tonally to say like a super bad because you have these real young people in these real situations that just happen to get really out of hand. Um, but it's not like huge performances, it's totally truthful. I think everything that's the most funny in this movie is the most funny because these characters are so real and they're in these really weird situations. And in terms of the takeaways, of course, it's just a wild ride. So many laugh out loud moments. But like we said, there are these poignant moments and you know, where she thinks that she's helping Percy, of course, she then goes on her own journey and, and realizes that she needs to find herself and yeah. find some kind of peace. So there's kind of like a two way thing going on there. So what do you think people can take away from watching it? Yeah, I, I mean, I think you'll find uh, growth wherever you look for it, you know, and I think that that's something huge that, that m this movie shows that uh, to, to have reservations about what kinds of people should mingle with each other and for what reasons. I mean, these, these people from different generations who, who have a bit of an age gap, they both have a, a lot to learn from each other. Um, so yeah, I think if there's any like cautionary tale, it's don't do the things that these characters do. Don't parent this way, don't take that ad. Um, but you also do understand. I hope there's some compassion to be taken away for, for people who do find themselves in those situations. Uh, and yeah, I, I mostly just really hope people laugh a lot and, and share that with their friends and a bunch of strangers in a theater. <laughs> and just very quickly, what are you going to be working on next? You back on in the theater on Broadway, something else? I'd love to. I mean, I, I, I write a bunch. I, I have music coming out um, and, and that's really exciting. I just came out with a, a single and uh, I'm, I'm always writing, you know, until the right project comes along. This, this project I, I chose and was so excited about because I cared about this character so much and the story so much not because it was like the biggest thing, which it does happen to be. So the next thing will not necessarily be the biggest thing. It'll be the thing that, that means the most to me. And that's that's always what I'm gonna do. Well, I'm out of time, but thank you so much for sharing thank that with me. Thank you so much. And I can't wait for everyone else to see you now. Hot Phoenix, thanks so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you.